Welcome to Futility Closet, a celebration of the quirky and the curious, the thought-provoking and the simply amusing. This is the audio companion to the website that catalogs more than 8,000 curiosities in history, language, mathematics, literature, philosophy, and art. You can find us online at futilitycloset.com. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to episode 58. I'm Greg Ross. And I'm Sharon Ross. In 1855, Pedro Carolino decided to write a Portuguese-English phrase book, even though he didn't speak English. The result is a language guide full of phrases like, burn the politeness, and he has a good beak. In today's show, we'll sample some of Carolino's hilariously fractured attempts at English. We'll also hear Hamlet's to be or not to be rendered in jargon and puzzle over why a man places an ad before robbing a bank. This podcast is brought to you by our phenomenal patrons. If you like Futility Closet and want to help support the show, check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash futilitycloset or look for the link in our show notes. Thanks so much to everyone who has been supporting Futility Closet. You are the reason we can keep on making this show. English as she is spoke. That's the common name given to a famously terrible Portuguese English phrase book published in the middle of the 19th century by one Pedro Carolino. We don't know anything really about Pedro Carolino except his heart was in the right place. What he was trying to do was publish a phrase book for people who spoke Portuguese but not English. So if, I mean, we have those today. If you live, say, in the United States and want to travel to Germany and don't speak German, you can buy a phrase book that just contains uh, little selections of German phrases and dialogues and things that you might find useful to have with you as you make your way through the German-speaking world. It's by no means trying to teach you the whole proper German language. It's just giving you sort of a little toolkit of Like the phrases you might most need if you were traveling. Yeah, which is useful, which is great. It's wonderful that Pedro Carolina wanted to do this for people. The problem is that he wanted to make a phrase book from Portuguese to English, and apparently he spoke no English at all. So the way he went about it, it appears, no one's certain, it looks like what he did was he got a, an existing phrase book that translated Portuguese to French. So if you're going to travel from Portugal to France and wanted to just get through France, this would give you French phrases that you could use. So far, so good. That works fine. But then he needed to translate those French phrases into English, and he apparently just did that mechanically with a French-to-English dictionary without understanding the substance of anything that he was doing and just sort of trusting that what came out the the end would be proper English, which, of course, it's not. You can't just do that. It does horrible violence to the language. But he published this thing anyway. Apparently, he never checked it with another, an actual English speaker and just, you know, put it out there for people to use. Uh, it appeared in Paris at first in 1855, and I don't think anyone ever took it seriously because it was recognized immediately as sort of this masterpiece of unintentional humor. Because what it is is a, a, just a disastrously awful phrase book of taking proper Portuguese phrases and translating them into dreadful, terrible English. Uh, And it's hilarious. So it was picked up quite quickly in the English-speaking world, published in London in 1883 and given the title English as she spoke. And someone sent a copy to Mark Twain, who immediately fell in love with it, and they published an American edition in Boston that appeared in Boston also in 1883, and Twain wrote an introduction to it. You kind of feel bad coming down too hard on this because... Carolino's intentions were great. He was just trying to help people. Um, There's a famous Monty Python sketch where someone deliberately and maliciously publishes a bad Hungarian phrase book and, in fact, uh, is eventually charged with an intent to cause a breach of the peace. So this is nothing like that. He was trying to help people, but it's still unintentionally hilarious. In the introduction to the 1883 American edition, Mark Twain wrote... Many persons have believed that this book's miraculous stupidities were studied and disingenuous, but no one can read the volume carefully through and keep that opinion. It was written in serious good faith and deep earnestness by an honest and upright idiot who believed he knew something of the English language and could impart his knowledge to others. The amplest proof of this crops out somewhere or other upon each and every page. So with Sharon's help, what I want to do is go through the book and just give you examples of this purported... Portuguese to English phrase book and show you how far wrong it goes. There are two sections to the book. The first is uh, vocabulary and the second is dialogue. So we'll do vocabulary first. And the first section, if you've ever uh, even studied a, a foreign language, these are just groups of words and phrases that, that pertain to certain areas of life. For instance, the first one is of the man. These are phrases that he thinks will be useful for you to know that relate to a man. The brain, the inferior lip, 
the brains, the superior lip, the fat of the leg, the marrow, the ham, and the reins. Then we've got the trades. Starch maker, porter, barber, Chinaman, <laughs> coffee man. You could be a professional Chinaman. <laughs> you could be a professional Chinaman. <laughs> Founder, pork shop keeper, grave digger, carts right, tradesman, tinker comma abrasier, stocking mender, nailer, and my favorite, locksmith, spelled like the Spanish of uh, the Scottish lake. <laughs> L-O-C-A. So that's someone who mends lakes. <laughs> Also, something appeals to me about founder. You can be a professional <laughs> founder. That's what you do for a living. Look, he is a founder. Kitchen utensils. The skimming dish. The spark. The pot lid. The fire. The pot hanger. The smoke. The sponge. The clout. And the jack. The smoke is a kitchen utensil now? <laughs> I don't even know what a clout is. Or... <laughs> for the table. Some knives. Some groceries. Some crumb. Crumbs. <laughs> Eatings. Some sugar plum, hog fat, some wigs, some march pains, a chitterling sausages, an amulet, a dainty dishes, a slice, steak, a mutton shoulder, and vegetables boiled to a pap. <laughs> Which is what you might request in a restaurant. Yeah, that and some wigs. <laughs> Quadrupeds beasts, lamb, roebuck, ass, dragon, <laughs> shit ass, wild sow, ass colt, lioness, Ram, Aries, and Dormouse. I think those are all quadrupeds, including dragons and dormice. <laughs> fishes and shellfishes. Calamari, large lobster, dorado, snail, a sort of fish, wolf, hedgehog, torpedo, and sea calf. Uh, degrees, by which we... We think it means ranks. Oh, I thought I, I, your guess is as good as mine. I think this means uh, ranks in society. Yeah, yeah, but that's the best we can guess because it's 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 kind of a, such a weird list that we're not even sure <laughs> you what, can't really tell. what he's going for here. But it's a cannoneer, a general to galleries, a vessel captain, a great admiral, a harbinger, a king, a lieutenant. All is one thing. A parapet, <laughs> a quartermaster. A army general and a vice admiral's ship. So you I, can be a ship as a rank, apparently. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I can't quite tell if he thinks these are in some sort of order. So a parapet outranks a king. You can draw your own conclusions. Um, here are some familiar phrases that you might find useful if you're traveling from, say, Lisbon to London. And we're sure you'll find them very familiar. Go to send for. Have you say that? Have you understand that he says... At what o'clock dine him? Apply you at the study during that you are young. Dress your hairs. These apricots and these peaches make me end to come water in mouth. How do you can it to deny? Wax my shoes. <laughs> that are the dishes whose you must be and to abstain. This ink is white. <laughs> this room is filled of bugs. This girl have a beauty edge. This wood is full of thieves. <laughs> that could be useful. Tell me, it can one to know. Dry this wine. He laughs at my nose. He jest by me. <laughs> this, this is great. He spit in my coat. <laughs> <laughs> he has me take out my hairs. He does me some kicks. <laughs> he has scratched the face with hers nails. He burns oneself the brains. He was wanting to be killed. I am confused. All your civilities. I am catched cold. I have put my stockings outward. I have croaked the candle. I will not to sleep on a street. I am pinking me with a pin. I dread myself in envy to see her. I take a broth all morning. I shall not tell you then two woods. <laughs> the thunderbolt is falling down. The rose trees begins to button. <laughs> the ears are too length. The hands itch at him. Have you forgetted me? Help to a little most the better yours terms. I mean, some of these you can make a vague idea of <laughs> what of he was going can. for, but that's just gibberish. That should must me to cost my life. Do not might ones understand to speak. Ones can't to believe you? If can't to please at everyone's. Take attention to cut yourself. Take care to dirt yourself. Dress my horse. 
Since you not go out, I shall go out, nor I neither. All trees have very deal bear. You make grins. You mistake yourself heavily. You come to rare. Some of these you can't even tell. All trees have very deal bear. (laughs) All right, moving on. Uh, That's it for vocabulary. Now, uh, the second book is Familiar Dialogues, which, again, you've probably seen this if you've ever seen an actual competent phrase book. This is if you're traveling to some English-speaking place. Uh, and you just want useful phrases to use. I guess this is what you'd expect people t- to be saying in the street <laughs> if you went there. For to wish the good morning. How does your father do? He is very well. I am very delight of it. Were is it? I shall come back soon. I was no came that to know how you are. Tableau. <laughs> For to dress himself. John, make haste. Lighted the fire and dress me. Give me my shirt. There is it, sir. Is it no hot? It is too cold yet. If you like, I will hot it. No, no, bring me my silk stockings. It's our make holes. Make it a point or make to mend them. Comb me. Take another comb. Give me my hand car, chief. There is a clean, sir. What coat dress you today? Those that I had yesterday. The tailor do owe to bring soon that of cloth. Have you wexed my shoes? I go wex it's now. It must that I may wash my hands, the mouth, and my face. The walk. Will you and... <laughs> I can't even start this. Will you and take a walk with me? Wait for that, the warm to be out. Go through that meadow. Who the country is beautiful. <laughs> Who the trees are thick. Take the bloom's perfume. It seems to me that the corn does push already. You hear the birds gurgling? Which pleasure, which charm. The field has by me a thousand charms. Are you hunter? Will you go to the hunting in one day this week? Willingly. I have not a most pleasure in the world. There is some game on they cantons. We have done a great walk. With the tailor. Can you do me a coat? What cloth will you do to? From a stuff what be of season. How much wants the L's for a coat, waistcoat, and breeches? Six L's. What will you to double the coat? For something of duration. I believe to you that. When do you bring me my coat? The rather that be possible. Bring you my coat? Yes, sir, there is it. You have me done to expect to. I did can't to come rather. It don't are finished? (laughs) The lining wore not sewed. It is so that do one's now. Button me. It pinches me too much upon stomach. The sleeves have not them great deal wideness. No, sir, they are well. To inform oneself of a person... How is that gentleman who you did speak by and by? Is a German. Tongue, he is German. He speaks so much well Italian, French, Spanish, and English that among the Italians they believe him Italian. He speaks the French as the Frenches themselves. The Spanishesmen believe him Spanishing, and the Englishes Englishmen. It is difficult to enjoy well so much several languages. It certainly is. <laughs> For to ride a horse. Here is a horse who have a bad looks. Give me another, I will not that. He not sail no to march. He is Percy. He is foundered. Don't you are ashamed to give me a jade as like? He is unshoed. He is with nails up. It want to lead to the farrier. Your pistols are its loads? No, I forgot to buy gunpowder and balls. Let us prick. Go us more fast. Never I was seen as so much bad beast. She will not nor to bring forward, neither put back. Streck him the bridle. Hold him the reins charters. Peak strongly. Make to march him. I've pricked him enough, but I can't to make march him. Go down. I shall make march. Take care that he not give you a foot kicks. Then he kicks for that I look? Sook here if I knew to tame Hicks. Hicks. Now that's not even a word. (laughs) From the housekeeping. I don't know more what I won't with they servants. I tell the same. It is not more some good servants. Anyone take care to sweep neither to make fire at what I may be up. How the times are changed. Anciently, I had some servants who were divine, my thought. The duty was done at the instant. All things were cleanly hold. One may look on the furnitures now as you do see. It is too different. Whole is covered from dust. The pier glasses, sideboards, the pantries, the chest of drawers, the walls, selves are changed of colors. I do like it too much. Believe me, send again whole the people. I take upon myself to find you some good servants for to succeed them. Ah, what I shall be obliged to you of it. With a bookseller. What is there in news literature? Little or almost nothing. 
it not appears anything of note. And yet one imprint, many deal. But why, you and another bookseller, you does not to imprint some good works? <laughs> works. <laughs> there is a reason for that. It is that you cannot s- to sell it. The actual liking of the public is depraved, and they does not read who for to amuse one's self ant, but to instruct one's. But the lettersmen who cultivate the arts and the sciences, they can't to pass without the books. A little learns are happies enough for to made to satisfy their fancies on the literature. Have you found the buff on who I had call for? I have only been able to procure the octodecimo edition, which is embellished with plates beautifully colored. That's the best part of the whole book. In the middle of all this wreckage, there's one just exquisite English sentence. I have only been able to procure the octodecimo edition. Which people um, sure use that phrase right, constantly yeah, that's while the tragedy. traveling. You'll never actually need that. Uh, with a dentist, I have the teeth ache. Is it a fluxion or have you a bad tooth? I think that is a bad tooth. Please you to examine my mouth. You have a bad tooth. Will you pull out this tooth? I can't to decide me it. That may make me a great deal pain. Your tooth is absolutely roted. If you leave it, it shall spoil the others. In such case, draw it. I shall neat also your mouth, and you could care entertain it clean, for to preserve the mammal of the (laughs) teeth. I could give you a opiate for to strengthen the gums. I thank you. I prefer the only means, which is to rinse the mouth with some water or a little brandy. I can't tell if it's just my impression, but it seems like this whole thing goes downhill. Like, it's bad enough in the beginning, but towards the end, it's almost completely incomprehensible. The last section, he has headed idiotisms and proverbs, which I think he meant idioms, but perhaps idiotisms is better. The ones I picked out here are ones that I... I cannot make any sense whatever of. So hold on to your hats. Here we go. The necessity don't know the low. Few, few, the bird make her nest. It are some blue stories. Nothing some money. (laughs) Nothing of Swiss. A bad arrangement is better than a process. That's That's, another good sentence. That sounds like it should mean something, but I can't quite figure out what it would mean. It might, it might even be true. Some of these don't even mean anything, but that sounds like it should mean something. I'm going to start saying that to people. <laughs> he has a good beak. <laughs> to do the fine spirit. Take out the live coals with the hand of the cat. <laughs> Take the occasion for the hairs. So many go the jar to spring, then at last rest there. He eat until to cant more. He is not so devil as he is black. The stone as roll, not heap up, not foam. I'm guessing that's the Rolling Stone gathering. Well, I thought so too, but but not heap up, not foam. (laughs) He has found the knuckle of the business. He turns as a weather cockle. Those aren't even English words. (laughs) The pains come at horse and turns oneself at foot. (laughs) So much go the jar to spring that at last it break there. Friendship of a child is water into a basket. That might be true. I don't know. Burn the politeness. And this is this is my favorite one. To crunch the marmoset. <laughs> so we'll leave it there. Uh, this whole thing, it's popular. It was even more popular in the 19th century. Twain, Mark Twain again wrote, It is one of the smallest books in the world, but few big books have received such wide attention and been so much pondered by the grave and the learned and so much discussed and written about by the thoughtful, the thoughtless, the wise, and the foolish. Long notices of it have appeared from time to time in the great English reviews and in erudite and authoritative philological periodicals, and it has been laughed at, danced upon, and tossed in a blanket by nearly every newspaper and magazine in the English-speaking world. Every scribbler almost has had his little fling at it at one time or another. The book gets out of print every now and then, and one ceases to hear of it for a season, but presently the nations and near and far colonies of our tongue and lineage call for it once more, and once more it issues from some London or continental or American press, and runs a new course around the globe, wafted on its way by the wind of a world's laughter. In fact, this inspired a a series of other sort of related books. Uh, I'll put links to these in the show notes. Uh, One is called English As She Is Wrote, which is a collection of terrible English that has been spotted on signboards, epitaphs, and other places. And another one called English As She Is Taught, which is a teacher's collection of students' unwittingly funny answers on examinations. Uh, And I'll put a link to this book itself, Carolino's original immortal masterpiece, in the show notes. Um, It's one of the funniest books I think I've ever read. Father 
Father's Day is coming up here in the U.S., and if you're looking for a great gift for Dad, or maybe just something fun for yourself, consider a Futility Closet book. Both books are like a big box of chocolate for your brain. Hundreds of short bites of amusement, quirky oddities, offbeat inventions, amusing quotes, and brain-teasing puzzles. Look for them on Amazon and see why other readers have called them a fascinating compendium of interesting bits of information and fun books that can really be enjoyed by all. This is just a fragment that I like. Uh, Sir Arthur Quiller Cooch taught English literature at Cambridge 100 years ago. And his book on the art of writing is based on a series of lectures he gave there uh, in 1913 and 1914. In the book, he takes a break at one point from talking about good writing to talking about bad writing, what he calls jargon, which is basically mushy, formless, uh, really wordy language that he found in a lot of the journalism and politics of his day and sadly is still with us today. He says, jargon has two main vices. It uses circum circumlocution rather than what he calls short, straight speech. And he says it habitually chooses vague, woolly, abstract nouns rather than concrete ones. For example, in the House of Commons, a member will not say no in answer to a question, but will rather say the answer to the question is in the negative. He hated this, and rightly so. But the way most teachers of writing would try to show how to fix it is come up with a bad example and show you how to improve it. And instead, what Quiller Gooch did was take an example of gloriously perfect English, in this case, the to be or not to be soliloquy from Hamlet, and turn it into mush, which I've always liked. So here it is from 1916, Sir Arthur Quiller Cooch, uh, turning Hamlet's to be or not to be soliloquy into jargon. To be or the contrary, whether the former or the latter be preferable, would seem to admit of some difference of opinion. The answer in the present case being of an affirmative or of a negative character, according as to whether one elects on the one hand to mentally suffer the disfavor of fortune albeit in an extreme degree, or on the other to boldly envisage adverse conditions in the prospect of eventually bringing them to a conclusion. The condition of sleep is similar to, if not indistinguishable from, that of death, and with the addition of finality, the former might be considered identical with the latter, so that in this connection it might be argued with regard to sleep that, could the addition be effected, a termination would be put to the endurance of a multiplicity of inconveniences, not to mention a number of downright evils incidental to our fallen humanity, and thus a consummation achieved of a most gratifying nature. I'll be trying a lateral thinking puzzle for this show. Um, Greg's going to give me some kind of interesting situation, and I'm going to have to puzzle it out asking only yes or no questions. And he's been acting like this is a really complicated puzzle, so I have to say I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is sent in by listener Lawrence Miller, who says, Hi, folks. Okay. I love your podcast. Here's a lateral thinking puzzle that is based upon a true story. A bank robber, in advance of the robbery, places an ad that includes the time and place of the robbery and a detailed description of the robber. The robber gets away with the crime. What happened? Okay. Uh, this is this actually happened. Yes. Um, is the time period important? Not really, no. Okay. Is the specific location important or anything about the specific location important for me to figure out? No. Okay. Um, is the gender of the bank robber important? Mm, interesting question. No. Um, okay. Is where the advertisement was placed important? Like in what medium or... No. Okay. Um, when you say that an ad was placed... Saying the time and date and location of the robbery, mm -hmm. all of those things, were were they all accurate in the ad? You mean, is that where the robbery took place? Yes. Yes. Okay, because like you could say there's going to be a bank robbery and you put it at a different bank and then you go rob a, yeah. another yeah, 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 yeah. bank and you you divert the cops or something. Okay, so the, the advertisement was correct in in labeling the date and the time and the description of the robber like all of that was accurate information for what actually occurred um i have to say yes to that okay all right but be careful okay okay a robbery took place at a bank yes okay by one robber yes yes and did the robber look like the robber that was described in the ad? I'm sort of confused. Okay, let me backtrack. Let me let me figure out this ad. Okay. An ad was placed stating 
the time and place and description of the bank robber? No. Yes, but I think you're very okay. likely making an assumption. Read that part again, then. A bank robber in advance of the robbery places an ad that includes the time and place of the robbery and a detailed description of the robber. And all of those pieces of information are accurate? Yes. To the robbery that actually took place? And a robbery did take place? Yes. A real robbery, not like a, a movie or a, a play or a stunt or a, like a real robbery? Yes. Okay, yes. does it matter what was stolen? Uh, no. No. Um, okay. Does it matter... Are there any uh, physical characteristics of the bank robber that I need to know about? Uh, uh, yes, I'll say yes. Depends what you mean. Yes. Um, okay, so you said the gender wasn't important. Is the robber's height important? No. Race? No. Um, some uh, uh, handicap, what we would call a handicap or disability or... No, no, not any personal characteristics. Not a personal characteristic, something the robber was wearing? Yeah, the ad described the robber's appearance. Okay, and was the robber disguised during the robbery? Yes. Disguised in a way that made the robber look different than than the ad description? No. No. Was the robber disguised as somebody else, like a recognizable per- person or class of people, like he was described, he or she was described, as a, I mean, he or she was disguised as a police officer or a bank worker or... Something like that, Something yes. like that. Um, was the robber actually like a police officer or a bank worker or, or something like that? <laughs> was the robber a police officer? In or? real life. Oh, no. No, no, no. But the robber was disguised to look like another class of... Person, such yes. as like a police officer, bank or okay. Yep. Was the robber disguised as uh, like a police officer or some other authority like that? Uh, no, I wouldn't say like that. No, no, as being a bank worker. No, a construction worker or something like that. Yes, something like that. So the robber was described. Oh, so the advertisement wasn't advertisement for the robbery but an advertisement for something else that was supposed to be taking place at that time place and description yes yes okay so that's that's what i was phrasing wrong before so the bank robber was described disguised as a construction worker yes would you call it a construction worker or is that just close, close enough, enough? Yes. yeah okay was there more construction workery people present at the scene yes um, was it an ad placed for we need construction workers to be at this bank? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> yeah, that's the right answer. It's like you just like I'm roaring up on these things. I, I didn't. Even see how it you... took me a while. But when you turn the corner, you just like you make these leaps that I just can't make. Uh, Lawrence writes. This actually happened in 2008. A robber took out an ad on Craigslist offering a day of work for road maintenance workers and asked them all to be wearing a bright yellow ANSI certified conspicuity vest, safety goggles, and a respirator mask, all of which the typical freelance road maintenance worker would own and coincidentally with the robber wore to the scene. He asked them to meet outside the bank. This is uh, the Bank of America branch in Monroe, Washington. To, uh, to meet outside the bank at 11 a.m., they thought they'd get twenty eight fifty an hour for road work, and instead they acted as decoys. From a witness's point of view, a bunch of workmen were standing around waiting to start work when one of them casually walked over to a guard who was unloading money into the bank, pepper sprayed him, grabbed the money, and ran away. And as far as I can tell, he was never caught. Wow. I mean, that is really clever. That's a good puzzle, too. That's a really good one. I had to. What I was agonizing over is I had to word it just right so you wouldn't... <laughs> instantly figured out <laughs> i thought i was afraid this is gonna be really challenging because you were like struggling to get ready to get i'm like oh no it's gonna be that hard so okay it's really tricky with you so uh and lawrence sent a link to a news story about this the guy escaped on an inner tube if that if the story wasn't already on an inner up. tube yeah and i think he got away with it i sort of gather that uh something like this took place in the movie the thomas crown affair with pierce brosnan i have to watch that movie again i think something like that happened there too maybe mm-hmm. that's what inspired this guy i don't know so thank you, Lawrence, for that. Terrific. And if anybody else has a puzzle they'd like to send in for us to use, you can send it to us at podcast at futilitycloset.com. That wraps up another episode for us. If you're looking for more Futility Closet, check out our books on Amazon. Follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Or visit the website at futilitycloset.com, where you can sample over 8,000 captivating diversions. 
At the website, you can see the show notes for the podcast and listen to previous episodes. Just click podcast in the sidebar. If you want to support Futility Closet, please consider becoming a patron to help keep us going. You can find more information at patreon.com slash futility closet. You can also help us out by telling your friends about us or by clicking the donate button on the sidebar of the website. If you have any questions or comments about the show, you can always reach us by email at podcast at futilitycloset.com. Our music was written and produced by Doug Ross. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.